Hi Phil, this is Steve at Swim Therapy, welcome you here on the 8th of July 2011. Whilst you're with us today, we had a look at your front crawl relative to doing triathlon swimming. This was your first swim, so we're going to watch this through and then we're going to go through it camera by camera, just to have a chat about some of the things that we spoke about on the day. Let's just slow things down. The head over camera, what we was looking at here is the lines that we hit as far as extension in rotation. And when you actually finished your session here, we had a look at uh, a swimmer doing extension in rotation and what it actually meant as far as reducing uh, resistance uh, is concerned. It is a big part of the shape that we make as far as reducing that resistance. And if you remember, reducing resistance has to come before increasing propulsion. But nevertheless, you have a good extension in rotation. I do like it. Um, you hit a good line in front of the shoulder and you continue to grow through that line, which is very, very important. From the side camera, a couple of things that we do see. Your extension at the back of the stroke, specifically with your left arm, comes up a bit short, as we can see here, this right angle. It does mean that your hand, as we can see, is at the bottom of your wrist there, has not gone past your hips, and your hand should be lifting at around about this point. We do also see the elbow rising, coming to the front, which is fine, but we do see a, a little bit of an early hand entry at this point. Remember, stretching out and extending to where we want the stroke to start, which is at full extension, uh, is probably more advisable. Extension at the back of the stroke on the right arm is a little better. Could still do a little bit more. You can see that you've now covered your trunks uh, this time, but uh, just going beyond them would be a little bit better. This time we see the elbow rising and then stopping. Now the hand is coming past and then the elbow starts moving again. So there's a couple of different things going on there. That stop start action uh, with the elbow uh, will actually make the stroke feel a little bit uh, notchy at the back end because now the stroke, the elbow's stopped, hands come past, now the elbow's going to start its journey again. Again, a little early on the end entry at the front. So if we watch the stroke here, it's a longer stroke on the right-hand side and very much shorter on the left-hand side, and you'll see where the hand's coming out the water there to where it's coming out the water here. It's in two different areas. So we are losing some of the stroke underneath the water as a result of that. Your position under the water in extension and rotation we can see here fully extended and rotated through hips and shoulders. That looks very good. Flexibility through uh, the lower limbs, again absolutely fine. I know you said to me your right ankle feels as though it might cause a little bit of uh, stiffness but it's, uh, the water's doing it a power of good here because it looks pretty good. So we have good extension on left and on the right side. And we have a good rhythm through the kick. Remember the line that we try to pull through is on or outside the line of the body. By and large, your right arm will, put, will take a good path to the back of the stroke, whereas your left arm will always want to try and fold underneath this center line. And we had a conversation about that perceived center line uh, towards the end of the set. The better your extension in rotation, the less chance that you will be able to pull down a center line. Now we have the center line, but it's pointing in the wrong direction just as you're going to start the pull. So your perceived center line is gone, which is why we need to pull down the line of the body. Pull down the line of the body in its streamlined position and not down the center line. Very good. This particular shot always suggested to me that it was downward pressure on the hips at least in the lower back area because the head seemed to be a little too high. It was just a, a feeling that I got. The, the, the chances are that the sensation that you have when you swim is that it feels right, but it only feels right because it's your habit. And we do need to perhaps change that habit just to free up the hips a little bit and make the streamlined position a bit better. We also need to be thinking about the paddles and how we create energy going towards the feet so that the body can go forwards. And we do that through looking at the three phases of the stroke. Phase one, the first 15%, can we create a catch? And we can see how the elbow and the wrist has just fallen in the first part of the stroke, and we haven't created the catch. Second part, set phase two, can we accelerate it to the midpoint so that we have an upright paddle? Kind of very-ish, shall we say. It's better than the first part, 
but the last part we loop we come up a little bit short we know we come up a little bit short and the hand has turned in as well which means that we've let go with uh, any water that we had in any event so we kind of guesstimated your efficiency of the stroke on this side could be a maximum of 75 percent stroke on the other side left hand you can see the hand will drop in very much the same way you pushed all the energy through the floor again the elbow has fallen away with it we will also see the elbow start bringing that the hand back which means that the arm is at an angle so we are slipping water and we also know that the left arm comes out the water far too early and turn it turned in so we kind of guesstimated that your left arm might be at 50 percent so we perhaps needed to consider some drills to see if we could actually uh, get the arms and the hands to create a, a, a more efficient paddle. Uh, we uh, spoke about the head towards the end of the session, but nevertheless, um, you did it, you moved your head and you created a better position. But we'll look at that again in a, in a few moments. First drill that we did was a drill that we call EVF, Early Vertical Forearm. And the whole point of this drill is trying to create that shape the first part of the uh, of the uh, stroke which is called the catch the first 15 percent elbow high fingers low wrist underneath the elbow on or outside the line of the body we practice this with snorkel and fins just to make life easier for yourselves but nevertheless the drill itself is very important to try and keep the back of the uh, upper arm parallel to the surface of the water with the elbow high and wrist underneath the elbow start with a slight sculling action outwards send the fingers to the bottom and the elbow high this creates the catch this creates the paddle and scull the hand back to the front very good you can incorporate this drill as part of your training cycle as part of the warm-up a part of a technical part of your swim but it's an easy drill to do as long as you try and work on making the drill as the best it can be and not just the easiest the easiest it will be next part of this is taking what we did and called a pull through where we practice all three phases we practice the catch take it through to phase two where the shoulder the elbow and the wrist are all in line so we have a very nice upright paddle that's going to be sending energy backwards remember now I want you to extend and make sure that the wrist goes past the elbow and in this kind of instance you can see that your hand has come to the level of your trunks it's come a little early on this one because we can see the elbows already lifted we need to push past your hips and then lift the elbow and the lift of the elbow we incorporated in the opposite side so we'll see what happens as far as that's concerned but there's the catch there's phase two through to phase three try not to hurry this and when you get into the Superman position which is fully extended hold that shape take a breath and then reset the uh, the brain so that you know what you're trying to do next because it can all be seen to be uh, a little bit hurried sometimes very good when we did it on the opposite side under the same kind of rules but this time we added when you hit full extension at the back of the stroke because your left arm is the culprit more than your right but when you hit left at the back of the stroke then I needed you to fully uh, extend at the back if necessary throw water out the back at this same time then I want you to lift your elbow and then drop your elbow back down again and then school the hand forwards this hopefully will actually create good patterns in the water good catch try not to let the hand come inside and create a cantilever just here to try and keep the hand underneath the elbow to the back of the stroke hold that position lift the elbow drop it back down again and bring the hand forwards and don't forget to breathe that was a good drill excellent and like I said to you before a drill has to be challenging so challenge yourself on this to make it the absolute best it can be I think the proof in uh, what we did as far as these drills are concerned is actually quite plain to see. Let's just have a look at your first swim again at full speed and then we'll quickly go to your last swim. 
So we can see that the arms and their paddles and the elbows falling away and the head high and the hips look as though they're underneath the pressure. So just picture that in your mind and then we're going to go quickly to the last swim that you did and we just see the changes in, in, in how you swam. Heads down, position looks so much nicer in the water. No pressure being pushed down on the hips, that line through the spine looks very good. The elbows are staying much higher in the stroke. It looks excellent. This is not fixed, it's not finished, it's just better. And that's all we can serve to do when we go training, is to, to finish our training in a better position than when we started. Remember these kind of drills that you've been doing are technical drills, and technical drills take a long time to perfect months maybe even years but nevertheless remember the, pr the the thesis to this is that just try to be better at the end of the session than you were at the beginning so good luck with those drills phil and i hope to see you again soon